Okay, uh, hello again, uh, Roger Lee's here, and this is me doing the final part of my very quick uh, talk through the uh, 2015 paper. Two this time, and I'm starting off at question eight, and we'll just work our way to the end, okay? Uh, question eight, uh, James has paid £297.50 for a laptop in a sale. The discount was 15%, calculate the original price of the laptop. Okay, so if X is the original price of the laptop, then the original price, take 15%, gives you the 297.50 that they mention up there. How do you take away 15%? You think of 100, take 15, 85, times it by 0 0.85. So it's X times 0 0.85. 297.50, so you divide that by that, there it is there, to get X, the original price, and you get £350. So the original price, £350. Uh, okay, on to question 9, just flip this over. Question 9, there we have it there. Just centre it. Here we have, uh, there we have a flag, and... Um, you have a bit there that they are telling you is blue, PQTS, PQTS is blue. And the question is basically calculate the area of the, the blue section there. Uh, that is obviously the area of the big triangle. Take away the area of the small one, QRT. Okay. A couple of wee bits of information they give you, and that is that they are mathematically similar, which uh, basically means that one's just uh, an enlargement of the other. Uh, the area of triangle QRT, QRT, that's 400. Okay, so we need to get the big area here. Okay, let's get the scale factor. Um, when I'm doing scale factor, I always tend to do big number over little number. 30 over 24. Calculate or simplify that to 5 over 4. And if we're talking area, what's the area factor? You square the scale factor and you get 25 over 16. So what does that mean? Well, it means that the area of RPS, the bigger triangle, is 25 over 16 times the area of RQT. We were told what RQT was. RQT was 400 times that by 25 over 16 and you get 625 square centimetres. Okay, so here's me just reiterating that the blue section is the area of RPS, take away the area of RQT, so that says 625, take away 400, 225. Okay, and there's question 9. Question 10, come on up, one side. Eventually get it. There we go. There. There's question ten. The pendulum of a clock swings along an arc of a circle at uh, centre zero. Um, the pendulum swings to an angle of 65 degrees, travelling from A to B. So th this is a slightly unusual spin on it. Or, uh, so they, they give you the length of the arc AB. Normally you've got to work that one out. It's 28.4. And you have to calculate the length of the pendulum. Now in here, the length of the pendulum is actually the radius of a circle. Okay, so here we here we have me working it out. Uh, the length of the arc, <coughs> pardon me, is pi times d, now that's the circumference of the circle, over 360 times the angle. Okay, they give you the length of the arc, 28.4. Pi d over 360 times 65, just plugging in a few wee numbers here. And uh, as usual, I've kind of laboured this to death. I've done 28.4 times 360, and I've left the pi d over 65. Then finally, I've moved the pi times 65 down, and I've left d up there. So we were like changing the subject of the formula, if you remember that. Uh, put that into your calculator, and you get d... Don't forget, d is the diameter, 50.1. The pendulum is a radius, so it's half of that, and I get 25.05. So if I look at 11, the, the top of a table is in the shape of a regular hexagon. Uh, 
the three diagonals of the hexagon, one, two and three, you can see them there, uh, each of length 40. Um, so you just half it, you can see me doing a few wee scribbles here, there's 20, there's 20. 360 divided by 6 is 60, so you can see that this tabletop is made up of 6 isosceles triangles. 20, 20 and 60 degrees. So we're going to use the area of triangle formula to get the area of one of them. Uh, that's a half AB sine C. So it's a half times 20 times 20 times sine 60. Uh, I've written that there. Times it by 6 because there's 6 of them and you get 1039.2. And again that doesn't appear to be a rounding off issue so that's what I've gone for. Uh, and there we go. So we'll look at 12. Uh, yeah, here's another one of these. Done lots of these in practice, so hopefully you manage this one here. The diagram below shows the circular cross section of a milk tank. And uh, again, there's the line down, there's that there. You should be getting used to going from centre to there by now, if you've been with me with all the practicing that we've done. The width of the surface is uh, 1.8, so that's not 0.9. Uh, the radius is 1.2, so from the centre to the circle is 1.2. And uh, the height, or depth of water they're talking about, is uh, a radius. There's 1.2 from the centre to there, plus this value here that I've called x. It's uh, Pythagoras, of course, so x squared is 1.2 squared, take away 0 0.9 squared. Uh, that gives you 0 0.63. Take the square root, uh, 0 0.179. So the depth of water is the 1.2 plus the 0 0.79. The 1.2 sent to the bottom plus 0 0.79. And you get, well, I get 1.99 uh, metres. Okay, over to question 13. In the diagram below, P, Q and R represent the positions of Port Lee, Queenstown and Rushtown respectively. Okay, uh, let's have a look see what they say. Port Lee is 25 due south of Queenstown, so there we have it there, P and Q, that's okay. From Port Lee, the bearing of Rushtown is 072. Port to Rushtown there, that's why that's 72. From Queenstown, the bearing of Rushtown is 1 to Rushtown, I should say, is 128. From Queenstown to Rushtown, that's 128. Now, we have a set line here, so they uh, add up to 180, so that gives you that is 52. That's 72, that's 52. They all add up to 180. That makes that 56. The question they're asking is calculate the distance between Port Lee and Rushton. Uh, there today. I've just put x. It's a sine rule question. x over sine 52 is 25 over sine 56. Uh, cross multiply, you're way out of trouble here. x sine 56 is 25 sine 52. And then move the sine 56 back down. Again, it's a bit like changing the subject of a formula. Put that into your calculator and you get 23.8. OK, and let's move on to question 14. OK, and here we go. A rectangular picture measuring 9 centimetres by 13 is placed on a rectangular piece of card. Uh, so there we have the 9 by 13 rectangular piece of card. There we have it there. And you have X, top and bottom. X there, X there, and we have X all the way around. OK. Now you can see a few uh, scribbles I've got there. Um, if that's 9 and that's an X and that's an X, if that's 9, add 2X. Looking at the vertical component, if that's 13, add X, add X. That's 13, add 2X. So um, question uh, A is, uh, here we go, write down the expression for the length of the card in terms of X. Now, the length, they tell you, is the up and down bit, so it's 13 add 2x. 
Hence it says, uh, show that that is equal to zero. It seems a bit random, but until you realise that the area of the card is length times breadth, and they tell you that that's 270. So here we have it here. 13 add 2x, that's the length, times the 9 add 2x, the breadth, gives you 270. 13 times 9 add 2x, plus 2x, times 9 add 2x. I've brought that over just to save a bit of uh, time, equals 0. Multiply all this out. Again, use your calculator, 13 nines, 13 twos, don't need a calculator for that. 2x times 9, and 2 times 2x gives uh, 4x squared, and there's a take 270. Okay, we have a little bit of uh, tidying up to do here. 4x squared comes up to the front, uh, 26x, and what else add 18x? Gives you uh, 44x, and you have 117, take away 270, gives you minus 153, that equals zero, and there we have that proved. Okay, and on to Question 14, B. Calculate x the width of the border. Uh, in other words, solve 4x squared plus 44x, take 153, gives 0. This is all about the quadratic formula, as I've written there, where a is 4, b is 44, and c is minus 1, 5, 3. Okay, you can see the working there. Uh, minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a, there we have it there, minus 44, plus or minus the square root of b, 44 squared, minus 4 times a, 4 times c, minus 1, 5, 3. You have the uh, minus, minus problem that you've probably seen quite often by now, which really just means add, and you get 4, 3, 8, 4. So you're left with uh, two solutions here, minus 44 plus root 4, 3, 8, 4 over 8, or minus 44 take away root 4384 over 8. So you're left with two um, answers of 2.8 and minus 13.8. Now 2.8 is the only sensible one. That's negative. X can't be negative. It's a number in a frame of a picture. So it's 2.8 because it's positive. Okay. And that's the end of the question paper.